So I just want to thank you all for turning up. Um, this is a, a humanitarian open street map team event that you're all doing the map -a for. Let's talk a bit about what we're doing tonight. The main thing we're focusing on is the Ebola response. Uh, for the Ebola response, there's been six million edits so far to OpenStreetMap. So it's a global volunteer network you're joining tonight. Um, there was an event by our colleagues in the US yes, uh, last Friday with 90 people there. So it's everyone from all around the world helping to, uh, helping to map for the Ebola response. Just want to emphasize how important the work is you're doing. So earlier this year, I was in the Philippines as part of a recovery response to Typhoon Haiyan. Our team were working in an area we'd never been to before, so we had no clue what was there. Before a map of an event like this, it was a point on the map. We didn't know what was there, but within a couple of days, through events like this and people carrying on the work when they got home, we had a full map of all the buildings in the area. We were able to work with local volunteers and plan out our response, and that was only possible because of events like this. Uh, Ivan is going to give some context to Ebola about how these maps are happening. Do you want to say a few words on that? Sure. Okay, so um, actually, first of all, it's not just Ebola that we're doing today. We're also okay. doing, uh, doing a little bit of Central African Republic. Um, so I, uh, I will make this very brief because uh, the, the longer we stay in here, the, uh, the more it becomes like a sauna. And I'm told that there actually is a, a cafeteria, which is a little bit cooler, we can disperse to. But a quick uh, discussion of what this is kind of about. Um, I was in Haiti during the, uh, the cholera epidemic where we were unable to tell where the cases were coming from, despite having every single patient that walks into our facilities telling us where they come from, we didn't know where that was. We had a column in our registry book for cholera patients that might as well have been labeled random syllables because people were telling us where they came from, but we could not relate that to anything. So who here knows the story of Jon Snow? Okay, who doesn't know the story of Jon Snow? All right, so there are a tiny number of people. I'll go through really quickly. 1854, cholera epidemic, London. A guy who's got one of the better claims out there for greatest physician in history. And I like that because he made his name by making a map. The guy took the cholera patients that were coming into the clinics in London, mapped them using the addresses, found a cluster of cases near Soho, actually went there to Broadwick Street and found a pump a meter away from some cesspits, from some sewage, and therefore accurately identified the source of the cholera epidemic. Removed the handle of the pump, stopped the epidemic. It's a bit more complicated than that, but basically this was a guy in 1854, via mapping, stopped a cholera outbreak. Fast forward 150 plus years, and in Haiti, we can't do it. If there was a single pump or a single well or a single source causing that epidemic, we wouldn't be able to find it because we can't tell where our patients are coming from. Which led me and Andrew from the Red Cross and uh, Pete, who's back up here, a colleague from MSF, and the wonderful folks at Humanitarian Open Street Map team to decide this cannot stand anymore. We cannot, 150 years after we could map an epidemic in London, just give up and say, well, we can't do it in Africa because we don't have the base maps. Uh, you can see where I'm going with this. If we actually have the base map, which tell us where things are, where villages are, where neighborhoods are, where streets are, and a patient walks into our facility and says, I come from XYZ Street, and we can actually map that, then maybe we're going to be able to actually stop more epidemics. So this isn't just about making a pretty map so that we can find our way to you know, the, the, the dining hall or whatever. This is about being able to correlate where people are coming from, where diseases are breeding, where water and sanitation is causing people to fall ill, you'd be able to trace them down, and instead of waiting for the sick to arrive in our clinics, to get out there and do some prevention and save thereby a great many more lives. That's what we're trying to do here. So MSF and the British Red Cross have gotten together on this initiative called The Missing Maps. And I can tell you right now, if we can map South Sudan, Haiti, Central African Republic, Chad, um, bits of West Africa, uh, Bangladesh, I personally guarantee you a major disaster in the next 12 months. Okay, not personally, but these are, the, <laughs> these are the areas where we can be quite certain that we will have to work. And why should we always be chasing after the disaster? Why not start doing the missing maps before disaster strikes? Therefore, yes, we are doing Ebola, because right now we're chasing around Ebola. Every single person who catches Ebola 
to give you an idea of the challenges here, we have to trace every person they've come in contact with for 21 days. Ah, you came in contact with somebody who had Ebola. How are you feeling today? And again, today, how are you feeling? We have to do that because anyone who actually develops symptoms is then another uh, potential spread for this disease. And I can tell you right now, um, I don't mean to be alarming, but we have lost control of the Ebola epidemic. We are no longer able to contain it. It is spreading beyond our ability to respond to it. We have 100 expats in the field and 100 more unfilled vacancies in the field. And we have thousands of national staff working on this and we are still not able to contain this epidemic. So it is very helpful, even though we don't know to a very precise level what we need mapped, the more that's done in Liberia and Sierra Leone and Guinea, and now as of today, Congo, the better it's gonna be for us. So this is not really the missing maps, this is actually still chasing after a disaster. However, for some of the people here, we're gonna be working on the Central African Republic, an extremely poor landlocked country where I spent a little more than a year of my life, which has got the second worst population health indicators on the planet where the crude mortality rate, the number of people who die each day, is always at the emergency threshold. And to give you an idea of that, if you lived, if you went to a high school that had a thousand people in it, and it was in the Central African Republic, somebody would die every 10 days. That's a normal thing for that population. And that's, and that's even though we're already providing a huge amount of health care. And this is one of the places that's really the missing maps, one of the vulnerable places that needs a lot of help. And right now, okay, there's a bit of, well, a bit of, there's a fairly substantial war going on. But nevertheless, it's not the Ebola crisis that everybody's talking about in the news. So I'm actually quite proud that it's not just chasing after disasters we're doing today. We're also looking at places which just need a little attention. And in the end, what it boils down to is we take for granted that public health infrastructure of mapping. It's just another thing that we have that people in the poor world don't. And that's one injustice that we can rectify right here, right now, in this room. So welcome all. I'm around. Come and talk to me if you're curious about how we use maps for epidemiological purposes. Um, but I would very much like to thank each and every one of you for just about the only thing I can think of that actually provides operational assistance for those of us trying to work in the field. So hats off to you. Thank you very much. And.